when you go into a new environment, it's so important that you understand what the work they have done, you know, in the previous two to three years to know what and how they've been trained. Um, and experiencing a lot of the coaches that I've worked with, but I have taken a lot out of, to, um, you know, some of the ASCA conferences, for example. Yeah, and, and how did you how did you come up with the drills and how, did, how would you plan? And um, books, mainly from the US. Uh, so called soft skills, like, um, just communication, but then also, um, you know, actually making a few program decisions. I was part of the medical team as, as an osteopath treating uh, the players and, and also um, the body. Interestingly, when you go into a new environment, it's so important that you understand what the work they have done, you know, in the previous two to three years to know what and how they've been trained. They were trained very aerobically. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, they just it was different. We, we had John Quinn on and he said how much anaerobic sort of sprints, hills, power cleans, that type of stuff that you guys were doing with them. Well, yeah, Essendon was exactly the – they were a speed, power, repeat speed program. Yeah. And, to be, and so, to be honest, what I did is I did something in the middle. You know, yeah. I, I, I grabbed elements of what Quinny was doing and I kept elements of what they were doing. So the volumes were very high. Um, but we did a real... Uh, I was lucky that I had the ability to, you know, both Mark Williams and Phil Walsh at that time supported me unbelievably. They were just, you know, for a young man, they really did back me in. And, you know, Was there a relationship always. before the role or you guys met... Um, no, well, the they, they were obviously, no, I never met it before, so no, I didn't know it okay. at all. Um, but they backed me in, uh, which would never have worked unless they did. Um, we did a heavy conditioning program and less football. Um, mm -hmm. And what we did was crazy. Like, I, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Compared to the loads we do now, I can't believe. We pushed the envelope, why. yeah. So, um, providing, I guess, uh, exercise ideas from an injury prevention or, or mitigation perspective and worked really closely with Matt Haas and Alex Clark around that time. And we had a fantastic medical uh, crew in Shane Lemke and worked with Toby Watson, who um, had been on the Tour de France, and also Scott Fraser and, and Pete Lyon, these guys that have all been within professional sport for um, a significant amount of time. And so they really helped, uh, I guess, develop my uh, skill set from an osteopathic perspective and how that fit within the greater scheme of, of our high performance department. And then I transitioned more into the performance aspect and, and working underneath uh, Matt Haas and Alex Clark as, as a, an assistant SNC on long term athletic development programs. And then from there, when we had a changeover in in staff is when I stepped into that, that rehabilitation space. And I actually um, initially continued to, to treat some of the players, but then take, took a step back um, from treating and just focused on uh, the rehab and performance aspect of our program, which uh, initially was, was a really tricky adjustment for me because when you've been ingrained in an environment where the athletes are used to having your manual um, therapy mm -hmm. skills and, and now you're explaining to them, no, well, that's not my role, um, mm. as athletes can be. Give us a rub, I'll, yeah. Just, yeah, 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 yeah. Can't Give you us a rub, mate. My back, or, um, <laughs> and so there, there was, there was a, there was a, a change in mindset there that was required from myself, but also from the playing group. And and Peter Blanche, who uh, took over as the head of medical, was fantastic in that. And, so, um, any activities that you wish you were equipped before getting into that full time role? Um, like I say, it was probably coming out of undergrad that that all sort of kicked off. So I probably some of this stuff would have gone over my head initially, but some of the stuff that I've just been able to sort of pluck and take away, a lot of my learning and experience so far has been peer to peer um, and experiencing a lot of the coaches that I've worked with. But I have taken a lot out of to, um, you know some of the ASCA conferences, for example, that they put on. There's always terrific speakers there. So if you're currently studying at uni and trying to sort of find your way in this field, you can, you know, always get your level one and get involved to make sure that you sort of try and get across to those when they're when they're back on in person and you can sort of network and meet some really good people. Yeah, and how did you 
So how did you come up with the drills and how, did, how would you plan uh, the skills component to it and then even also the video analysis? Like, did you have experience in, in that side? Uh, um, uh, do you know what? I, back in those days, I would order a whole lot of DVDs and um, books, mainly from the US, on, on football, soccer drills, um, like every single book that came out on top drill you know, the AX Academy and things like that. And, and I would just use those and I would just pour through these books and, um, and DVDs. Uh, and every day you check the mail for a new book to come in to try and get some new ideas. And um, because this is 2002, 2001, 2002, before all of that sort of information was, excuse me, so readily available in the, on the internet. So um, that was the and main so way that I did it. And you were doing the the, the drills f from tactical sort of skill development point of view, opposed to sort of condition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. interesting. Yeah, yeah, trying to do, trying to do both. Yeah, uh, and how do you feel like that shaped you as you into your career now, like that that role? Oh, I think um, it made me appreciate work ethic and and the work that goes into that sort of a role, and it also forced me to be a good communicator. With why you started working at the gym at your uni? Yeah, just, um, yeah, both from, like, uh, so-called soft skills, like, um, just communication, but then also, um, you know, actually making a few program decisions, um, you know, problem solving on the fly if, you know, you've got clients with a injury or back pain or, uh, you know, just don't want to do it for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, you know, how to deal with those situations, even though... Um, they might start, they might be sort of may seem a world away from what I do now. Um, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, um, you know, key themes are the same.